welcome to the show. This is What's Your Story. My name is Catherine Mwangi here at the Villa Rosa Kempinski. Thank you for making time to tune in to the show. My guest is an entrepreneur, adventurer, and a researcher. At least that's how he described himself. His name is Ki Musao. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Looking very you. funky. Oh, really? That's good. Thank you. Appreciate yes, you are. <laughs> yeah, Does you. this have anything to do with your adventure part of you? Uh, maybe, maybe not. Maybe it's how the, the day started. Uh -huh. So, yeah, I think uh, taking it easy. Taking it um, easy. Yeah, I just kind of think for the day today. Not, not really uh, anything to do with the adventure. Yeah. But I like my life a bit easy. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Because these streets of Nairobi, sometimes they try to... To, what? to focus us and keep us on the run every day, so it's yeah. good to sometimes the sit back, eh? yes, yeah. relax, yeah, and okay. enjoy life. Karibu sana. Asante sana. Thank so, you very much. So I read your profile, uh, the one you sent to charity, and um, first Kim reached out to me on Facebook, and I, just very brief, eh? You, mm -hmm. you know, it was just, <laughs> it, was <four> <laughs> it was four lines. It was four lines, and and I was very intrigued by, uh, you know, what you do with the Overland Track and, and the adventure, and then I read your profile, and I'm like, and he couldn't say all this when he was writing to me on Facebook. I mean, you have Yeah, that's why at some point I was, that's why I was asking, did, did I, did I say too little, did I, you, you, I, I don't know, you, yeah. you know, you, you also want to be, to focus on, on maybe what, what, what is really necessary. Yeah, what you want to share. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, yeah, there are a lot of things, of course, I, I, I can share on my yeah. personal life, yeah. my personal story. Yeah, because I read that and I'm like, oh my goodness, you have, you have done quite a lot. Really? <laughs> yes, you have. I no, mean, I've been around for a few years. I don't think I've done a lot, just been around for a few years. Uh -huh. But yeah, really, I've been, uh, I've been in the corporate world for quite some while. Yeah, let's um, talk about that. So what were you doing in corporate? Uh, I, I, I joined a company called Kenya Data Networks mm -hmm. in 2006. Mm -hmm. Yes, 2006, immediately after I graduated from the University of Nairobi. What were you studying there? So I used to do a degree in, in mathematics. Mm. So I'm, <laughs> <see? laughs> okay. Yeah, so uh, my first degree is in mathematics from the uh, University of Nairobi. So you're a nerd? Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I really don't think so. People who study maths are naturally nerds, by the way. I think maybe we try to run away from reading a lot of theory, you know, trying to grasp a lot of historical things. Uh -huh. So when I'm working with numbers, it's easy. I don't need to think, remember. It's, it's, I mean, one plus one is one plus one. There are no many... I wish it, was as around easy. It. it should have been as easy as one plus one. Someone studying that at degree level. I think we did a degree in mathematics wow. at, at Chiromo campus. Wha what was fascinating about math? I, I naturally love numbers. <laughs> so so I'm, I'm, I'm very happy working with numbers anytime. So if you want to throw me in the deep end, then, then give me things to, you know, to, to analyze and subjective things. And, but, but numbers are, are, are very, you know, a number is a number. You can't argue around it. So I love numbers. So I, I did a degree in mathematics back then. Okay. And yes. you're currently studying your PhD. I, I enrolled some, some while back. I uh, finished my coursework. Mm -hmm. And now I'm in, the, in that phase of writing papers. You have to publish at least two papers. Mm -hmm. You have to do your, in addition to the thesis. Still so in the line of finance? Still in the line of finance, but, um, but more on global global aspects. So mm -hmm. I'm studying something to do with, uh, maybe this has something to do with, with other stories we'll mm -hmm. talk later. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm studying something to do with mobility in Africa, crossing borders in Africa, trade oh. in Africa. Okay. So it basically the Africa integration mm -hmm. and uh, intra-African trade. That involves movement across borders, trade ac ac across borders. Mm. Why are we trading more with Europe than we are trading with our neighboring yeah. countries. Yes. Yeah, so that's, that's what I'm trying to unravel. Wow, wow. Yes. you're a choppy, eh? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes. that's good to know your education background. I mean, it makes a lot of sense then because, um, so first you incorporate, so what we know now as Liquid Telecom, yes? So what Yeah, no, it's, there? it's Liquid Telecom. Yeah. Actually, it changed names quite a bit, eh? Okay. Uh, I think what most people knew was Kenya Data Networks. Mm -hmm. Kenya Data Networks was really... Um, it, it was so Kenyan that people just, you know, it almost became a family name. Mm. Uh, what people don't know after that, Kenya Data Networks was later on bought by a South African investor. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a big company. It's listed in the, in the JOBAX, EJSC. Yeah. 
uh, called uh, Altec. Mm -hmm. Altec is a South African uh, corporate. Mm -hmm. Then now, again, bought again by um, a, a British, now it's now Liquid Telecom. So what were you doing there? Still, uh, actually, in the, in, the, in, the, in the Department of Finance, mm -hmm. across many, you mm -hmm. know, I've, I was there for, for eight years. Mm -hmm. So, of course, but, but all through in yeah. accounts and finance. Also. Yes. Yes. And, and you decided to leave that and move You to see, when, when, when the counties came into being, yes. uh, I'm very passionate about where I come from, my home, my... So, so my, my, actually, my first instinct was... Instead of applying for a job, because everyone wanted to apply for a job, get a pay, I actually offered to volunteer mm -hmm. and work for the county of Machakos. Right. Uh, but of course now that ended up being, you know, I got a job with the county of Machakos mm -hmm. uh, in 2000 and early in two, 2013, crossing to 2014. Counties were just, you know, structuring. Yes. And uh, Governor Mutua put up uh, 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 an investment board. This is the equivalent of what you'd call a parastato okay. in the national government, mm -hmm. called the uh, Machakos Investment Promotion Board. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and because I done so much on uh, foreign direct investment, so I thought this was a, you know, a good opportunity. Yes. So that's how I ended up in, in, in the county of Machakos. Yes. I was, um, I was, I was given. Um, uh, the job of uh, the CEO, Machakos mm -hmm. Investment Promotion Board, which, as I said, is an equivalent of what is a parastato in the national government. Mm -hmm. And that's where I've been for the last eight, ten years. Yes, yes, yes. So what are some of the uh, milestones you can speak to that, you know, um, you achieved during your tenure there? Quite a lot, actually. I wouldn't say me, but I, I, would, I would say, of course, uh, across the county, mm. but on, in investment terms. Uh, I think Ke Kenyans or naturally humans forget very easily. We, 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 in, in the year 2013, mm -hmm. Machakos was not what it is today. True. Even forget about now going to specifics. Yeah. Very few people know, knew a place or a county called Machakos because mm. it wasn't anywhere in the map, but um, because of the kind of mm. things we did, and specifically when you go to, you know, the kind of things we're do doing as an investment yeah. board, was basically to attract investors to Machakos County. Right. Yes. So give, give me a few investments that, you know, to, to date, you look at and you're like, yeah, my team and I did that. We happy. The, I think the biggest one is uh, Wrigley. Mm. Wrigley is an American company. Yes. Initially, the chewing gum. Yes, the chewing oh. gum. That's what people don't know. The chewing gum you chew here, not, let, let's not talk about Nairobi, let's not talk about Kenya, but across Sub-Saharan Africa, mm. it's manufactured in Machakos County. What do you mean? Yes. Wait, fast, wait. Is Wrigley available locally? I don't, I don't chew. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I don't use <laughs> Well, yes, it they, is. They, yeah, of I course. I thought you don't have Obits. And they're in many brands. Their branding now is different. I mean, it's just the oh. same like Brookside does a oh. wide range of. So Wrigley is available here in very many brands of chewing gum, of chocolate, of Choco bars and all no. that. Of course, the chocolate I think is manufactured from the factory in Egypt. Uh -huh. So apart from that one, the chewing gum comes from uh, Kenya in Kenya in Machakos. The factories in Machakos. Yes, wow. I think it was one of the biggest investment that we we we, had, we, we brought on board. Uh, and of course, the major work that was was on us was basically to facilitate them. It was a major investment, seven billion plus. Dollar, uh, Why mean, was Kenya Machakos um, attractive to them and not county? Why? I think there are many reasons, and how we positioned uh, mm -hmm. ourselves was first um, uh, location advantages. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a bit of, you know, chalk within Nairobi. Uh, it's a bit, it's a bit crowded Congested. for a factory. It's a factory they are manufacturing. Right. So the option would have either been to go manufacture within the industry area of Nairobi, uh -huh. or because now we are talking within the location yes, distances. Yes, yes or in Kiambu, or in Kajado, you know, you look at all those locations. Mm. But Machakos, I mean, the airport is, you can walk from the county to the airport, for example, mm -hmm. because it's basically at the border. So there are all those location advantages. And of course, we were giving a lot of incentives okay. in terms of uh, the things that we control within the county, which are basically to do with the fees and, okay. uh, you know, charges okay. here and there. Yeah. 
Of course, a lot of taxes are within national government. They're yes. not within the control of a county. Yeah. But um, interestingly, what, what most investors, especially in a country like mm. Kenya, look for is clarity of how things can be done. Mm -hmm. There is an investor who would be very willing to invest, but because they have found land which they, are, they, they, can, they have to buy, mm -hmm. but you know the stories of land in this country. Mm. So they are not sure, do I buy this land? What will happen tomorrow? What are, but when we come in as government and tell them, you give them the assurance, of course they do their due diligence. Yeah give them the assurance, yeah. it's clean, and they go ahead. Mm. So Wrigley was one big one. That's a huge one. I yes, didn't know that. Yes, it was huge. Wrigley is now in Machakos. Of course, they were moving. They were in Nairobi. Yeah. So they wanted to move their, yes. their, their factory to, to Machakos, okay. which they did. Yeah. Uh, there is one of the biggest storage companies. Uh, of, um, it's basically a refrigeration of drugs within uh -huh. Machakos. Uh -huh. It's a South African company called Imperial Health Sciences. Okay. Uh, there is a manufacturing company for soft drinks. Most people know Coca-Cola. There is a company called Brava. Mm -hmm. Brava Industries is in Machakos. What do uh, they manufacture? They manufacture a drink called Brava. Their, their branding is all Brava. Okay. Basically soft drinks, the okay. equivalent of uh, soft drinks, energy drinks, uh, you know, including mango, uh, pulping, and packaging, uh, all that. All do that they thing. sell that here? They sell that here. Locally? Yes, they do. Oh, wow. Yes. Okay. So, mm -hmm. and, and you're an entrepreneur currently running your family business? No, I run my family business, okay. which, uh, of course, when I was working, I, you know what Kenyans call side hustle. So <laughs> it was still there. You know, you baby it through the years. Yeah. It's been 10 plus years mm. of building a small business. It's just a family business that mm -hmm. I run. So that's what I, I, I went back to. Mm. Yes. So how are you juggling both then? Or the side hustle was being managed by somebody else? <laughs> It's a family business, so my wife, my wife would spend uh, most of our time yes, uh, running it. Yes. Um, and I, still, it was in the growth stages, so we we still nurturing the baby. Mm -hmm. So um, there wasn't much then, but uh, of course, then the, the other side of the coin is to ask, what if I just started earlier? Maybe I would have, you know, moved it quite quite mm. a bit. But anyway, there are no regrets about it. So we are where we are. So now focusing on the family business for now and see, you know, we'll see what the future has for us. Yeah, yes. something else could come up could and come up. you move to that. Yes. So while all of that is going on, there's something else that you have adopted as, well, you haven't adopted it. It's, maybe it's always been inside you. So yes. now it's coming out, yes. your um, adventure muscle. Mm -hmm. That yes. is the <laughs> only thing you told me. <laughs> in, the, in the brief. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, this sounds interesting. Okay, yeah. let's see what this is about. Yeah. So, so what prompted that? So, so back in the day, actually, you know, some of these things, you can't really place your finger exactly where it came from. But when I used to work for back then, Kenya Data Networks, mm -hmm. so we'd have this, we were very young. I mean, the, the, <laughs> the, the, the average age in that company back then, I think was around 23 years. What do you mean? We were young. Was that intentional on the company's part? I think it was. We had a CEO called Kai Wolf. Uh -huh. He passed away some okay. years back. But generally, we were young guys. All of us, we are from school. We have this energy that you don't question. You know, the closing at five for us was never... Why yeah. five to go where? No. To a house to eat bread and, you know, there's some tea in the office. You can as well feed on that. Yeah. So, yeah, we were young and we were... We were so, in, in the, you know, in, of course, we know we were social. We were young trying to explore. So I remember we were trying to plan how to, initially it was Mount Kenya. So we were trying to see, you know, hey, you guys, let's hike up. See, we can go to Mount Kenya. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I know someone there. We, I can plan for you. Back then we never knew there are tour companies which can organize that for you, get you the guides, get you. So we were just trying to say, oh, can I call someone who I know there? Can he guide us through Mount Kenya? So we would plan this. It will flop. You know, Mount Kenya is not a place you'd wake up and go. I mean, you need to prepare. <laughs> you need to go for those uh, short hikes. So it never worked. For like, you know, we'd plan. It never worked. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we just like pass, pass. So later on around, uh, this is around 2010, 2012. Mm -hmm. So around 2013, oh, there are tour companies which organize this thing. <laughs> I didn't know. So uh, a good friend of mine, I joined their, their group who are doing a lot of hikes. Uh, my first hike ever was, you know, in Gong Hills. <laughs> you know, doing those seven. There are seven. I think there are seven. Yeah, there up, are seven. Down, up, down. You did the seven? Yes, but now, 
later to learn for you to prepare for Mount Kenya, what we used to do now when we are in serious preparation, you do them, you're, you're like timed. Eh? Mm -hmm. So you start where the wind turbines are, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. do the seven to the other side of Konabaridi and do seven back. You start at nine <laughs> in the morning and you must take your lunch where you started. So you have done seven, you do seven back and by lunchtime you should be done and but I've, I've never understood, what's the rush? Like, it's supposed to be a fun thing. Why do I have to be tired? But now we were not doing it for fun. You're preparing for something. Oh, so, so you want to prepare your mission. body for endurance, for, you know, all that. So to prepare it, you can't do it for fun <laughs> anymore. If possible, actually run. <laughs> you know? <laughs> then you let your lungs, you oh know, expand. Gosh, expand. Allow that breathing to take, take your body to that extreme levels then maybe when you go to Mount Kenya, it will be a walk in the park. So we were doing that for preparation. How many were you? The group would, di would, be, would be different. It I mean, differ. these day hikes, I mean, you would range even 30 sometimes oh. to 80, depending. I mean, you'd be having like four buses to the, to the hikes. From so, your company? No, no, no. From the company I was alone. These are friends. I've joined ah, a, remember, I've joined a, a tour <laughs> hiking company. Yes. You pay them, they organize, they tell you on Saturday, we are going to this, to Abadeas. Uh, so you pay the people you meet, you're meeting them there. You didn't know yeah, who you're know meeting. Who they are. Yeah, ah. so, so that's how I broke away from that uh, aspect of us friends trying to plan. It doesn't mm. work. We plan, it doesn't work. You were that determined, like you needed to, to do Mount Kenya, to summit Mount Kenya. I just wanted to something to do with the outdoors. You know, are you, you know, serious? It's, it's, it's <laughs> on a weekend. What else do you do? Go watch football, you know. So uh, naturally, I, I like uh, I like the outdoors. So you I, do, I, eh? I, I tell people I can live in the bush. Very, You're uh, it's, those uh, bush people. It's, it's, it's very nice. Yeah. So I wanted to be outdoors. It's you've been in the office the whole week. So on Saturday you want to take a breather by not being in the city, take mm. something outside the city. Not every Saturday, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, and go enjoy nature there. And uh, so now, now after we started that, now I'd be hiking every, you know, every two weeks. I'm on a hike every so. Wow. You know those day hikes you go, you are back in the evening, back in the yeah. evening. Yeah. So how do you, so how do you like, I don't know, gel with strangers? I think I would have a challenge with that. I've always imagined. I don't know. I've never yeah. done it. Yeah. Like I meet 30 people. We don't know each other. Like how do I start talking to I honestly don't think I'm the best in that <laughs> in that aspect actually, but yeah. it it works. I think wow. um, actually some of the jokes we make. You know, if you go to those uh, hikes, the major ones where you take a week in the mountains, the person who is next to you becomes your friend, you like it or not. There is no other way around it. I mean, you are sticking together for seven days. You you have no phone to use. You have no network. You have no. So you basically have to talk. What else will you do? Talk, right. make friends. Yeah. So now we are like, you know, a family. Out, out of those people we used to hike with, we are a small family. We feel like, you know, we, we almost feel like we know each other. Yeah. Because you're on because the you same spent, mission. Yes. And, and you are out there. Uh, I think the longest we went is Ruwenzori. Uganda. Okay. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. For like 10 days. Uh -huh. You are in, walking in snow for days. In you, you are basically frozen. Your fingers are frozen. You are, we were 13, we were 12 or 13 people hmm. only. Because uh, for, so, for those major hikes, then the, the organizer used to be very specific. Okay. They have to know you are fit. Because I think, for example, with Ruwenzori, what people don't know, if you are, you are 12 of you, if one person the weak link uh, doesn't make it. Mm -hmm. Either they get unwell or they have an issue mm -hmm. and they can't make it to the summit. Mm -hmm. You are bought all of you. Ah. All of you. All of you? Yes. It's not like Mount, people have hiked Mount Kenya, Kilimanjaro, yeah. so, so it's, people know if you are going to Mount Kenya, you have enough guides. One of you is a bit unwell or they mm. can make it. They get one guide, they walk them back down. Allah. Ruwenzori is very technical mm -hmm. because you are all hooked on one rope so oh. so uh -huh. so it's so technical that you know the whole support team which are the guys they are, they are like double your number by the way yeah? so we are 13 we are like a support the guys who are helping us mm -hmm. they support the cooks the mm -hmm. the porters the guides mm -hmm. they are like what 30 mm -hmm. yes so like they two have for every person almost yeah if you are now you want to equate like two yeah. for every person yeah but if, the, if one person was, if I was, if I'm not able to summit, then the only way for me to go down 
is to use the same, mm. the same technique of going down. Rope on everyone, it's hooked somewhere down and up, then you, you descend. So I, you, can't, you can't say, okay, Kim is not able to make, let, let's give him his two guys to go back. Mm -mm. It won't work. All of you are bought. Try it another year, another time. And so so it, yes, that's why sometimes it has to be a very small number. You are sure the capability of these people, they are, of the same, they are going at the same pace, they, they sort of, they have gelled together, they, they, they do their thing like same pace, same everything, so that they are, there is no one pulling others back. Hmm. I am very fascinated by that, we shall be continuing because I want to know why. Why to, the two of us who are not feeling well, why can't we just go and the rest of you go back? But yes. we will come to that. We take a very, very, very short commercial break. I think the universe is telling me something this year because the first episode we had is this um, three girls who want to summit Mount Everest. Oh, yeah, if you yes, haven't yes, watched yes. it, go watch it. And I'm like, me, me just give me upper hill, I'm okay with upper hill on Gong Hill. Uh, but we'll be back after the break to get to know more of the adventures of Kim Musao. See, I titled the show, The Adventures of Kim Musao. Ah. <laughs> nice one. <laughs> Welcome back. It's What's Your Story. Thank you for making the time to still be watching The Adventures of Kim Musao. That's how we title this episode. And uh, we have heard uh, of your adventures with the mountains, etc. And of course, I'm very fascinated still by the fact that you can be summiting and something happens to one of you and you have to come down. And has it happened to you? No. No, no. thank L you. Lucky enough. We, we, we yeah, lucky, yeah. So... so during the break, you were telling us how, um, I don't know what mountain you were alluding to, where you have to be up by 1 a.m. Where was that? That actually luck basically applies to oh, any, mountain mountain where, 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 any mountain where you are to, because what you are, what you are taking care of is because you're walking on glacier. Mm -hmm. So you don't need to find you when the glacier is already melting, mm -hmm. becomes very slippery. Mm -hmm. So you want to do it before sunrise. Walk on that glacier when it's dry, hard rock, mm -hmm. and come back before it starts melting. Mm -hmm. So you are targeting to summit by sunrise. And before nine, when the sun becomes a bit warm mm -hmm. and glacier starts to melt, mm -hmm. you are past any glacier you have to walk through. I think for us, the biggest um, glacier walk, you have to call it, we did, was Ruenzori, which people, people, most people actually talk about Mount Kenya and Kilimanjaro. Mm -hmm. Very few people yeah. have done Ruenzori. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Ruenzori is one of the very few mountains which is white capped, Kabisa. Okay. So we, we, and this is different for every group. I mean, for our group, we started our summit at 2 a.m., mm -hmm. targeting to be at the summit of Ruenzori by sunrise, 7 a.m., thereabouts. Mm -hmm. But uh, what's the distance in terms of kilometers? I honestly can't remember, but it would be something to do with maybe 5, 10 kilometers, I'm guessing, okay. but I, I can't remember the exact length, uh, okay. I mean distance. But because we, was, we are targeting to summit by sunrise, we summited at lunchtime. Yeah. So, so which, which mountains have you summited? There are a lot of ranges within uh, the Abadeas, mm -hmm. stiff, good ones, I mean Elephant Hill, uh, there are quite a number of uh, peaks that you can do. Uh, on the other side of uh, Naivasha, of course, the whole of that side is a lot of mountains. A few, of course, in my homeland in Ukambani, yeah, where yeah. you face the sun like it's coming in twins. <laughs> it's quite, quite hot over there. Yeah, so we do all that. Of course, then uh, those would be in preparation for Mount Kenya. I've summited Mount Kenya. I've summited uh, Kilimanjaro mm. and Ruenzori. That's mm. Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and what happens to you? What, do you f what does it feel like, like when, when you get there at the peak? Very fulfilling. Yeah? Yeah. I think those are things which uh, don't just take your physical strength. They require a lot of mental strength. So after, after I summited the Mount Kenya, Kilimanjaro, then at some point I'm thinking, if I ever met someone I'm interviewing for a job, mm -hmm. and they tell me they have done mountains mm -hmm. like those, I won't view it like someone who hasn't done it. It will like tell me something. They'll have about preference. It. it will definitely. Really? Of course, yeah, the other things you have to yeah, consider. The skills and the But that would it it tells you something. 
It's it's mm. not easy. You know, these are things people don't. You know, the bad stories people never tell. What are the bad stories? You know, you're on your fourth day on a mountain, and and you start you question your sanity. <laughs> Why did I pay to be here? I in any case, I should have been paid to go through this <laughs> pain. Yeah. So so yeah. I think yeah. You mountains feel like are you're losing thing. it. Yes. Hallucinating. You feel like, no, this is wasn't one of the best decisions. <laughs> <laughs> you know those, uh, you know those, those flashes. They come. They tell you, no. Why am I doing this? Yeah. Yeah. And then you do, and you, you encourage know, yourself. And then you book another one after <laughs> that experience. So. Meaning, I think you're, it's you're human nature. Insane. Yes. Sort of. Okay. Yeah. So, so then, okay. So that adventure <clears throat> bone was uh, formed when you worked at KDN at, at 23 or 22, however old you are, mm -hmm. and. And it's now something that you do so passionately with your track. Yeah, no, of course, uh, that, that, that was, uh, I think I did the mountain so fast until I'm like, I should have taken them slow so that I take When time. you say fast, you mean what? Like, like in two, three years. Oh. There are people who do and repeat and because there are different routes. Yeah. If you're going to Mount Kenya, there are like four routes. Okay. But I'm um, one of those like, I mean. Once yeah, is enough. It's enough. Maybe so, again. did you have a target, being a nerd? You know, the way you say in two years I'll have done five mountains. I didn't have a target. I think it just happened that... Uh, uh, yeah, it's an internal <laughs> one. There must have been an internal yeah, target. It just fell into place. It just fell into place. I mean, there are no medals to win. There's, there's, no, there's no competition. So, I mean, it just happened that yeah. in two years, three years... You finished. I did all those. Then I'm like, if I have to repeat maybe sometime in future, mm -hmm. if uh, we have to target the big ones like Everest... Mm. Maybe it's a dream for the future. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So of course that transformed to other maybe ad adventurous things that yes. now I'm, I'm doing. So tell us about that one. The one you talked to me about on Facebook. Mm. So um, just the same way when we're planning a hiking. Uh, I don't want to say Kenyans, but I think humans have an interesting <laughs> way. When you're planning something, it's so sweet. You are a full room. You are ten of you. Planets, you know, like mm. to the dot. What have Kenyans done? Uh -huh. Then uh, days to the event. Bana <sighs> Oh. So, so in 2015, we had this sitting. A few of us, good friends, okay. you know, family friends, and we have four, five couples, and we're like, oh. By then, you know, World Cup was in South Africa in 2010. What people don't know, people were driven to work to, to South Africa for World Cup. Yes. I don't know how I never did that then, but then anyway, Okay. story for another day. Uh -huh. So we look back and like, people have been driving to South Africa. Why, why can't we just, we are four of us. What's the cost of hiring a vehicle? So we do the maths. It was on a December, I'll never forget. You know, Christmas is always on a ghost law. So you, you, you discuss it. So we say, oh, by the way, what if we were to hire a vehicle? Mm -hmm. How much is higher per day? We do our maths. What if we were to contribute the four of us? You do the math, because the rest are not mathematicians. <laughs> You're the one doing the math. <laughs> doing the numbers. <laughs> so what if we were to buy one? Hey. Uh, how, how much would it cost? We are four of us. So hiring, buying. Uh, you know, so we, we, we had a discussion, you know, and, and we were supposed to make a decision whether to buy, hire, go, come back. Mm. So we were comparing, you know. Okay. If you hire, it might be cheaper. But then you buy. come back, the vehicle is not yours. But when you buy it, it might be expensive, but it's your vehicle. You can use it over and over again. So, so of course, you have to balance a lot of things. So December happens, and we are like, yeah. December 2016, 12 months from now, we are going to South Africa by road. <laughs> and the okay. plan was there. Yeah. Yeah. And then? And then... Uh, <laughs> the normal happened. Uh, you know, months down the line, oh, you know... I can't make because, of course, genuine, you know, genuine reason. The same I would basically, I, maybe it would be me and say, you know, this has come up. Uh, so I, everything came up for everyone? So everything came up for everyone, <laughs> apart from me. But midway in 2016, uh, midway somewhere in 2016, I decided to sell uh, a, a car I was using and buy a 4x4. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know, I was link, thinking long term now. Mm -hmm. Even if I don't use it, I, I'll use it sometime. Uh, so I bought a, a Land Rover uh -huh. some, sometime early 2016. This is like three months after our discussion. <laughs> and so I tell these guys, by the way, we have a car to use. So let's figure mm. out the costs. 
I've bought it, it will be for my future use, but I mean, because oh, I bought wow. it. You still wanted the experience. Yes, you guys come in, we can just use it. Let's now meet yeah. the course, prepare the car. Were they available? <laughs> so, uh, months down the line, 2016, mm -hmm. ah, Mimi, this has come up. Mwingine, oh, najua. Uh, then 2017 is election, so, yeah. so there, there are a lot of things before election. People, everyone is trying to yeah. to prepare financially, prepare, you know. So, kila mtu by October, ala? Kopeke yako na landroba yako. Kopeke yangu, then I'm like, what? I've never driven outside the borders of Kenya. Yeah. You alone flying for, yeah. not driven across a border in Kenya. No. So, I'm like, now how does this work? Yeah. So, sometime... In, uh, I think it was around November or December. You see, the trip was supposed to be December. Mm -hmm. December because, you know, it's a long month. People can get their mm. leave at the end mm. of the We were all working anyway. Mm -hmm. We were all employed. Mm -hmm. So you need to, um, to apply for leave. Leave days, yes. Leave days, mm. you know, see how your leave days work. The reason why we were planning it a year in advance, so that if you have to accumulate mm. your leave days, you can do that. Yes, and employed. also save some money. Yes, yeah, save some money. Yeah. I mean, yeah, prepare psychologically. Yeah. Yeah. But as fate would have it, so by, I knew by, you know, end of October 2016, it's a month to when the trip mm -hmm. was yes. supposed to be. Na niko peke yangu. Aki. Yes. No wonder you said Kenyans. Then you changed it to humans. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be crucified. Yeah. yeah. They're still your friends anyway. Yes. No, yeah. they're good friends. Ah, they're good friends. Okay. They're good friends. Nothing against them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So, 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 no. <laughs> so, a month two, mm -hmm. so I, I, a friend of mine, I'm sharing, I'm sharing with him my disappointment. Yeah. Oh, look what these guys have. Imagine we had planned. It tells me, wait. I have a guy who is in the same Business or trouble as you are in. Okay. We were in trouble. I'm in trouble. I'm more alone. My family says, "Don't you when you, if you're alone, you're not even." Don't alone. go. Uh, yeah. Mm. And, and you don't want to defy those. You know, of they're, course. They're, they're feeling no. Yeah. If you're alone, just stay home. Pack it for another day. Mm. And so yeah, you know, I'd say ah, anyway. Nisa watu. Si kuingine si nita nita enda trip. So I meet this friend. I tell him my troubles, and he tells me, "Wait, I have another guy." Now, now we now became a conference. I go in the same trouble come away with. Mm -hmm. If you guys meet. <laughs> so I tell him what? I think it was a Sunday. Actually, I met the friend in church. Oh, okay. So in church, I tell him, I tell him, wait. Mm. Are you available tomorrow? Mm. I'm going to hook you up tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Two of you. So back then, Nakumat uh, Mega used to have a book fast, some, some yes, cafe yes, yes. in Nakumat Mega. Mm. So we... So he gives me the contact. I talk to the guy the mm -hmm. same day. It's Sunday. I'm like, if this works, then we're good. Yeah. Yeah? Uh -huh. uh, so I talk to him. Sunday on Monday, he tells me, by the way, I'll be in Mombasa. Let's meet at uh, Nakumat. Right. Books first. Yeah. We have a meeting. Uh, we get our... It's almost December. It's, I mean, if we have to go, we have a week or two to say we are to going. To decide. Yes. Mm. But by the time we finish our coffee... We were going the next day to the embassy for them. We only, we only needed a visa for South Africa. Thank God. So we, we only needed one visa for yeah. South Africa. So we said tomorrow, South African embassy, get our visa. That was the only, wow. I mean, we get our visa, then ah, we'll go. Yeah. So whose car were you using, yours or his? Everyone their car. Mm -hmm. So he has a, land, a, a Toyota Land Cruiser. It's brand new. He's in the same problem like I mean. You know, the family is like, I mean, how do you drive to South Africa alone? So, but travel is very interesting. I would not join your car to travel. In. I want to, I, that's why I say the car is a personality. Mm -hmm. I want my car to have gone for the trip, not just me. <laughs> so, we make the decision. We are going to South Africa. We put together the requirements for the vehicles, for ourselves, the visa for South Africa. We wanted to go through Mozambique. Mm -hmm. So, Mozambique is very, it's a very complicated uh, country to visit, especially mm -hmm. on road. Mm -hmm. So we, we said, okay, let's get a South African visa first. Even if Mozambique doesn't work out, we don't have to go through Mozambique. Mm -hmm. But South Africa, I mean, our, our aim is to hit Cape Town, the bottom part of South Africa. Um, of Africa so we can, um, we can avoid Mozambique anyway. Okay. Get a South African visa. If time allows, then let's 
fight with the issues with Mozambique mm. and try to get their visa. So that week, all of us, we are looking for the visa for South Africa. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think because of our his nature of work, my nature of work, we had traveled, I mean, mm. uh, so, so visas, getting a visa wasn't like that. We, we, we didn't have a worry with that. So we knew the visa would be issued. We got our visas. Then we said, ah, we have time. Let's get Mozambique visa. We got Mozambique visa. Oh, nice. And then uh, on the 20, I think it was on 26th of November, we were off to Cape Town <laughs> in two vehicles, each in their own. Wow. Yeah, so actually, sometimes when I look back, it's, it's sort of a solo tr travel because, mm. so that trip, for me, because he had work commitments and I was raring to go, I already have a partner we are traveling with. Mm -hmm. So the issue of you can't travel alone is already, yes. you know, that, yes. that's already out of the question. Yeah. So I tell him, okay, go for Jobo. As you finish Jobo this week, watch a mini pig a lap East Africa. Eh. To Patana Wapi? Somewhere in Malawi, Twende uh -huh. So I start my trip a week or two earlier. earlier yeah. Or two earlier than, than, than my friend. And instead of going towards South Africa, I go towards Uganda. Uh -huh. So I covered Uganda, uh, Rwanda, uh -huh. Burundi, uh -huh. uh, Tanzania. Then my friend joined me in Tanzania. Uh -huh. So then now we hit south. Together. Together. So we, oh. could, we met now after my two weeks covering East Africa, yeah. exploring East Africa. We met in Tanzania yeah. in a town called Mbeya. Mbeya is just before the border crossing. So from there now, we meet there. Now we are two vehicles, a convoy, <laughs> one man each vehicle. Yeah. And we are aiming for Cape Town. How long did it take you from there, from Bayer to Cape Town? I think we took around 30 days. Okay. Yeah. okay. I think that the, the nature of our travel is not, uh, people take months actually. Yeah. I would say even that's very fast. Uh, people take months. Okay. It's not the kind of rush you are doing. No. I mean, South Africa, if we were to live in Nairobi, you would be in South Africa in four days. Okay. Traveling, I mean. By road, eh? By road. If you're just aiming for Without South Africa. Without resting and having But for adventure. us, we wanted to explore the culture yes. in the countries. So we met in Mbeya in Tanzania. Uh, so so we, we wanted to do a circuit so that we cover all the countries in the southern Africa. So we, we, we didn't go through Zambia. Mm -hmm. There's a notorious border called Tunduma. Mm -hmm. So we went through Malawi. Malawi has a border with Tanzania called Songwe. So we went through Songwe border in Malawi. Remember, in Nairobi, we got time and got visas from yes, Mozambique yes. even. So we went to Malawi, spent time in Malawi. Mm. Malawi is very interesting, of course. People, Kenyans travel, drive to Malawi every okay. other time. So Malawi, then after Malawi, we entered into Mozambique through a border called Deza. We went to Zimbabwe after yeah. Zimbabwe. Now the other, from Zimbabwe, now we enter in South Africa yeah. through the Bait Bridge. It's called the Bait Bridge where the river... I think in Pompo. Okay. Yeah, there is a bridge. So we crossed through there. Then followed what is known as the Garden Route. The Garden Route is one of the scenic routes through the coastline of the, you know, East London, mm. Port Elizabeth, mm. all the way to Cape Town. Mm. You know, we drove along the, the, the Garden Route, the way to Cape Town. Mm. Something I didn't tell you. Yeah. I was aiming to catch the rugby sevens <laughs> in Cape Town. Yeah. Yes. Did you? I did. Oh. Yes. And Kenya went up to the quarterfinals. <laughs> nice. So an amazing uh, spot. Yeah. 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 So we hit Cape Town. Uh, next day, uh, of course, went to watch the rugby game. Yeah. Didn't have any ticket. But somehow you did it. Somehow at the gate, you know, those yeah. guys were like, I'm selling a ticket. <laughs> Kenyans. I'm selling a ticket. Yeah. We buy tickets. we in the game. Okay. Yeah. And you're looking to do that now with which route? I read you want to yeah, now, now actually after that, now, you know, we've gone through the eastern side of South Africa. We yeah. Have, we have covered Durban, East London, Port Elizabeth to Cape Town. Okay. Coming up, we wanted to do the desert. Uh -huh. So we went through now the northern side of South Africa. Right. So through Namibia, uh -huh. Botswana, then Zambia, then back to Tanzania and back to Kenya. So it was a, a circuit so that you cover all the countries. What's that budget like? Mr. Mathematics, <laughs> Economics, <laughs> Finance. What is that budget like? Good enough to have a good adventure. <laughs> Which means there are many zeros. Not uh, really, actually. It must no. be. It's, a, it's, a very, it's a very budget travel. 
it's very budget trouble. Really? It's a very budget trouble. It's okay. not uh, yeah, but I think I think for, for, for us I think that the foc if you focus on the money then you won't do it. You think twice. <laughs> I'm not saying you can buy a shamba, actually it's very small budget. But I mean you can start saying yeah. Okay. So so I mean it's, So what um, are you planning to do now this year? Which route do you wanna take? So I want to do Morocco sometimes this year. Okay. Um it's a long stretch. Mm. So the plan is uh, is very sketchy. Mm. But basically, I might have to break the, the, the trip into sections. You know, okay. do a few countries, yeah. park the car somewhere, yeah. fly back home, catch up with ah. work and, uh, you know, family and all that. Fly back, continue. Uh, then if all works well, fingers crossed, once we get to Morocco, I'll see if we can cover Europe on, on, a, on a road on road as well. So I'll see you have that. such a radiant life. I mean, like I mean you, have to, you have to make plans that scare you. I mean, you, you mm. do small plans. Mm. I, one of the things I usually know back in my mind, just the same way I was telling you, mm -hmm. when you're hiking, mm -hmm. there's no meadow. Mm. You don't have to die <laughs> trying to get to that peak when you can say, you know, my body are dead enough. I mean, I call it off. Yeah. So it's the same way. I mean, I'm... I'm driving to a long destination. Yeah. There's no meadow for me. I mean, I can as well say, you know, after two weeks, I'm, I'm, I don't feel like. Yeah. I mean, call it off, do mm. it another day. So mm. the good thing is I'm taking it at my pace. I love that. Yes. What, what a beautiful story. So you're running your business now. You're planning to um, uh, have an excursion to Morocco. You know, it sounds very exotic. It is. Yeah. I, I, I can't wait. Part of my focus on the trip to Morocco is uh, on, on uh, the underlying bit of it. Yeah. I'm doing a research on my PhD to do with uh, intra-African trade, uh, integration in Africa. Uh, some years back, I presented a paper in uh, Uppsala University in Sweden uh, on mobility in Africa. Basically, the the movement around Africa, what, what it entails, what are the bottlenecks, uh, you know, non-tariff barriers to trade and a lot of other stuff on, on trade aspects of, uh, of in Africa. And we realize Africa trades a lot mm. with the Western world than trades with Africa itself. Mm. Mm. So we are trading more with the UK, with Germany, and with the, the US. And forgetting ourselves. But we are not doing it yeah. among ourselves yeah. because of many reasons. So those are some of the things uh, that my research is focused on. And uh, part of this, uh, these adventures that I do, mm. they, 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 they add they into what, into it, they feed into what I'm doing in, on my research. I could have done it other way. I mean, you can do a book research without having to go all yeah. the way. But this for me is one way of doing my, my research. You're killing many so birds with Many birds with one stone. Yeah. So God willing, I, I hope by the end of the year, I will have done my, I will have published my articles through my, through my, through, through that year when I'm traveling, and then I'll be publishing my journals. So hopefully I'll have done my journals, and I will try to complete my thesis, and possibly come back to graduate by the end of the year. Hmm. So wow. some, some goals here and there. So I, I see that. that. So in, in wanting or desiring to share your story, what, what would you hope the audience gets from how you have lived your life so far? I, I think for me, is a, you know, th there are no limits to this life. Mm. Naturally, when, 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 I'm, when, when, I'm, when I'm driving around and I'm traveling with my, with my truck, mm -hmm. so I, I've realized when I lower my window, I say I'm somewhere, mm -hmm. not within Nairobi, mm -hmm. so s the person expecting to see a white muzungu mm. driving the car. So people would see cross-border travel, land mm. travel, more with... With the, with the Mzungu, the Mzungu is all about traveling. And the, of course, there are many doing that. Mm. But we rarely do it for many reasons. Yes. Uh, traveling in Africa first is not the easiest thing yeah. uh, for an African yeah. in, that, in that case. Because, you know, 70% of the countries will require you to process a visa to visit their country. I mean, an, an African country mm. requires you to have a visa but it won't require Mzungu to have a visa to visit them. So there are a lot of, of course I know, there are a lot of challenges. Yeah. But my point is, yeah. it can be done. Can be done. It can be done.
and to live without limits. Live without limits. It can be done. Mm. Nothing is impossible. Yeah. It can, if people have done it, it can be done. Well, yes. man, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Dr. Kim <laughs> <laughs> uh, To be. Huh? To be. Yeah, I mean, you're studying it, you're doing all your research uh, physically, you know. So, yes. doctor, so we have just been listening to the adventures of Dr. Kim Musao. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And thank, thank you. you for watching. And I know most of you will be asking me if I want to join him. You've heard he's not doing it as a business, but please, how can people reach you? Because they will reach you. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm available on, uh, on, on social media networks as, as uh, Alpha Land Rover. That's what I travel as. Uh, of course, I have my own uh, accounts, but I travel as Alpha Land Rover. Alpha Twitter, Land Rover. Facebook, Instagram. Instagram. Yes, Alpha Land Rover. Alpha Land Rover. So yes. every question you have, you just go to socials and find him on Alpha Land Rover. Yes. And he can answer that. For me, I'm just grateful that you made the time yet again to watch. I think we are all being said to the same thing. Uh, we need to get out there. And he's saying, just, just live your life without limits and, and don't look at, uh, is this enough? Or maybe I should use this to buy a piece of land or property. And all of those are valid. But I just admire his sense of adventure and I hope that somehow it will be, it will catch. It, the, the injection has, it has entered. <laughs> That I would need to have a third guest talking to me about summiting and I don't yes. know crossing the borders in Africa. But I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we should start a group where to Najikakamu Ivi, to Naji Chocha, to Naji Encourage, because I don't have that adventure bone myself. It's there. It's you, there. You just need to ignite it. Kidogo. Ignite. It's there. Uh, the mathematician tells me to ignite that. <laughs> have a good evening. Thank you for watching.